Wow. Yeah, the uh, uh, gravity and, and just uh, intensity were, were the words that uh, really st stuck out as that song went to tape. Uh, it just, you know, the, the lyric is, it's, it's intense. You know, if you're really listening to the words and, and what it's saying, um, and then you take into account all the different instrumentation that, uh, that ended up being on that. Um, it's a really quirky kind of way to uh, tell a story, I think, you know, the instrumentation that we chose, but it, it's perfect for the song, I think. Uh, you know, the lyric is a little obscure, for lack of a better word, and uh, so the instrumentation should also be somewhat obscure. Um, and it is, and I think that we you know, the darkness of the song uh, we were able to really capture and uh, get to tape, so. I remember when we started tracking this song, we were trying to figure out what it was. You know, we were trying to figure out what color this song was or, you know, um, what direction to go with it musically. And I don't think he was, I don't think it was intentional necessarily, but, but Dave uh, started telling me the story of, you know, the background basically for where the song came from, you know, what it was about, what it meant. And uh, while he was telling the story, I just hit the talk back and I started, you know, the band was all on the floor and they started listening. And um, it, it was just, it was real, you know, kind of a somber moment uh, when we realized what the song, you know, was really about, the gravity that it actually held. And uh, at that point, everybody instinctively just latched on to the, the soul of the song and, and it went to tape probably in one take after that. What are you doing there? What will you find at the top of the world, at the bottom of your mind? When is enough enough? When will you see? Not till you've paid the ultimate fee. Little Emma came into the session uh, a little later in the game. I think because Dave had written it so much earlier, he said he'd written it years and years before when uh, Little Emma was Little Emma. She was six, um, I believe it was. And, you know, I think because of that, he had kind of, you know, not really considered the song for, you know, up as worthy or up, up for contention, you know, as in the lineup there. But when I heard the melody, I was like, man, what a. I think he said it started out as a commercial, uh, did he? He's a commercial writer. Um, and I heard the melody, I was like, man, what a great, great vibe. And then, you know, he had a great demo done on it already. So I was like, man, why don't we take that? And, you know, obviously it was a sentimental song for them. It was a really cool thing uh, to see Dave watching uh, Not So Little Emma record on the song that he had written for her when she was Little Emma. Um, it was it was neat to see you know the pride that he had as a father for her. Um, I've got a little girl too, so I could totally relate to that. And uh, you know, it's good to sit while she's in there recording. He and I would would discuss you know, and you could see. Uh, I mean, it was hard not to tear up sometimes, just you know, in telling the story. So they've got a really unique bond, a special thing. The music is great, and uh, you know, a song like Little Emma kind of is a full circle picture of their whole thing.
No More We May, we, we got this scalding track and uh, just really, really cool vibe uh, from top to bottom, you know, and uh, we were we were putting the final touches on it and Emma was in the booth and she was recording some fiddle stuff and she had, uh, it was late, it was two in the morning and you know, we were trying to come up with some cool ideas for stuff so I, I got out my fiddle and she was already out there playing hers and I went out there and our engineer, uh, Brad Bass, he, he hit record while we were out there and we stood next to each other and we started uh, just kind of riffing off of one another and that, I guess that translated straight in. It was like everybody started flipping out. So the next thing I know, we're, we're both geared up and we're trading solos back and forth on the song. And it was a really cool thing to get to do. Um, and, uh, you know, it was it was a special moment for the session because it all came full circle. Uh, after I'd heard how Dave and Emma had been to see our band, uh, see, see me in concert uh, years before, it was really cool to you know, look through the glass there and see her looking back and we were we were playing on one of their songs on their record uh, here in Nashville where I live in the studio. It was just a really cool moment and uh, glad I got to be a part of it. Definitely the first time I've been able to uh, uh, be in the studio with somebody who, you know, uh, had been a fan at some point uh, and, you know, worked their way into being ready to cut a, a big, you know, scale record. Um, do something worthy of national attention. It was just, it was a really, really cool thing to, to get to see that. You know, I know how much work goes into building your musicianship and, you know, Dave and Emma both have obviously put in the time. So, um, you know, it's real cool mutual respect while we're in there trading licks. Opus 57, that was uh, one of the, easily the most fun song of the session, you know, um, it was a romp, an instrumental. Um, I first heard the song uh, when I was a kid, actually, David Grisman Quintet recorded it uh, probably in 1978 or 79. I remember the song, uh, I was probably three or four when I first heard it. Uh, it was done in a much different way. Um, you know, we had Brian on the floor and uh, we, we started trying to think of it, you know, David Grisman uh, Quintet cuts a song, they have done it the way it needs done. So if you're going to cover that, you know, you need to find a new way to do it. Uh, just for, you know, out of respect and, and also so that uh, you stand up. And uh, so we decided to go with like a gypsy jazz kind of uh, arrangement. You know, we had, a, we had some great instrumentalists uh, and Dave and Emma, obviously, and then, you know, some of the best instrumentalists in the world all in the session. We wanted to try to give everybody their chance to shine. Um, and that was a great vehicle to do it with. So, uh, you know, it really takes you back to, uh, you know, the gypsy jazz, 1930s kind of hot club feel. It really worked and uh, so happy with the way it all worked out. It's, it's just a lot of fun to listen to. Thank you. 